Some of you know that uh, there have been some videos in the news recently, over the past four weeks or so, um, that have brought to light kind of the reality of abortion and are generating some conversations. I've had some good conversations, especially when I wore the pink t-shirt that says, Stop the War on Babies, Defund Planned Parenthood. Um, and if you don't wear a t-shirt like that, I highly recommend that you do. Anyway, so I'm going to make the pro-life case. Um, I guess that's all. This is my buddy, Josh Braun. He's not really my buddy. But I know him from the internet. Does that count? Yeah. I got to know him on uh, YouTube. I watched all his videos. He and his brother, Tim, have a, a pro-life ministry called, uh, they call it Equal Rights Amendment? Or, I can't remember, Equal Rights. Anyway, he is one sharp cookie when it comes to making the pro-life case. They do uh, tables on college campuses where they'll have abortion should be legal, yes, no, maybe. And then they will engage in dialogue with college students to see if they can persuade people who don't see it their way to change their minds. And I've learned a lot from him about making the arguments, but more about interacting with people, like your body language and things like that. So he's one, he's really cool. There's a ton of videos of him on YouTube. Uh, I actually met him in January at the Pro-Life Rally, and um, uh, we were, we I kind of tracked him down. We marched to the Supreme Court building. I tracked him down, I started chatting with him, you know, I just walked up and started talking, basically. And somebody shushed us, and I just grabbed him by his coat and drug him off to the side and kept talking, and my wife said, her, honey, you, you can't do that. Why not? He didn't mind. He's a super nice guy, really sharp, a lot of fun. He tells me he's, he was, his choice was to be uh, a pro-life activist or a professional pianist. He's good enough to be a professional pianist. He said if I Google him on YouTube, I can check out his piano playing ability. But I'm much more interested in his intellect. Anyway, if you get a chance, Google it and check it out. He's awesome. Okay. There could be somebody in here that has had an abortion. I don't have any knowledge of that. I'm not speaking to anyone specifically. We're going to talk about abortion in a very uh, intellectual manner. It's an extremely sensitive topic, too. There, You do find that women who have had an abortion will sometimes have guilt for a long, long time afterwards. Uh, I met a gal uh, at an organization that I have been involved with off and on, that that's what she does, is she works with post-abortive women, and sometimes there it's 20 years later, and they're suffering with depression, alcohol, um, problems caused as a result. Um, so anyway, we need to be, when we engage in this topic, keep in mind, if you're talking to somebody over like 14, they, they could have had an abortion. So, Watch your language, how you interact. We're going to, we need to think about the emotional versus the rational. Um, and a lot of these topics, when you get into controversial topics, you need to you know, be careful and aware of the body language of the person that you're talking to. If they seem to be getting really agitated, you know, there may be a reason for that. So you have to address these things on the, the intellectual level, which is the easy part for me but also tune in hard to the emotional aspect of this. This is a can be a very tense topic, so just, like I said, you have to be able to do both, which I'm great at the one and solidly mediocre at the other, but that doesn't matter. Okay, honestly, I'm gonna make an intellectual and a scientific case. I put this scripture in primarily for Jeff at Fellowship Baptist Church, but I'm gonna zip through all of it. The scriptures say you're, uh, the, the unborn are living human beings, or at least they don't disabuse us of that notion. Uh, there's only one scripture that pro-choice people will use, and they grossly misinterpret it. Uh, but some of these I'm not convinced. Um, Isaac the, talks about the baby struggling in the womb. Um, I don't actually know if this is written generically or if this is written to apply to Jeremiah. So just be careful when you use scripture. Uh, I think that faith, they say context, 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 who is it written to, you know, that kind of thing, because we do tend to sometimes grab a piece of scripture when it suits an occasion and yank it way out of its context and assert that it always applies, and that's not always the case. Jeff would kill me for this. Okay, do we all agree that we can't abort born human beings? Does it seem obviously wrong 
to abort a two-year-old. I wouldn't have to demonstrate that to any of you, right? No matter how strongly pro-choice a person was, most people are going to agree that it's wrong to abort a born child. So the question really is why? And there's really only one question in this entire debate. Um, Greg Kokel gives this talk, and I've stolen a lot of this from him. One question. People say, well, abortion is a really complicated issue. It's not. It's simple. Um, if the unborn is not a human being, if when people say, look, I just knocked off a bunch of uh, cells, skin cells, and they don't have any value, I killed all them, no problem. If the unborn are the equivalent of a pimple, or a boil, or a sore, they're not human, then no justification is required to kill them. But if they are a human being, no justification is sufficient. It really is that simple. So when you talk with people about this topic, keep that always in your mind because you'll get all sorts of red herrings. Um, the mom wants to finish her education, the kids will be poor, they should be wanted, blah, blah, blah. Those are all ancillary uh, red herrings. They're designed to throw you off track. Rabbit trails, I guess is the popular expression in the Christian circle. Keep your mind on, is this a human being? What does science say? According to the embryology textbooks, the cell results from blah, 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 human develop, development begins at fertilization. This highly specialized totipotent cell marks the beginning of each of us as a unique individual. All of us in here, we're zygotes. Embryology textbooks, essentials of human embryology. Um, the human begins with the sex cells, blah, 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 initiate the embryonic development of a new individual. And this isn't controversial. Science has known this for, I don't know, 75 years, 100 years. I mean, they began to have a sense of this, believe it or not, I swear to you, not too far post-Civil War. So a long time ago. Uh, fertilization is an important landmark because under ordinary circumstances, a new genetically distinct human organism is there by form. You understand uh, within, I don't know, maybe a couple of days after fertilization, maybe quicker than that, this young human being has a complete DNA. We, we could tell what color hair it will have, all that kind of stuff. Complete. So the science is incontrovertible that this is a young, the earliest stage of a human being. They used to say um, it's just a blob of tissue. Um, when you engage in any kind of discussion and argumentation on a controversial topic, you have to be very observant about euphemisms. This means we don't kill, we terminate. We don't, if, if you read Planned Parenthood literature, pro-abortion literature of any kind, the word kill is never used, not even the word terminate. They'll say, we'll remove the pregnancy. Um, you have to really watch the language, um, because how we use language can strongly influence our emotional feelings about something. So you have to be very, very, very careful and observe the language. I watched as the contents of a woman's womb came through the suctioning device into a stainless steel pail sitting at his feet. I stepped back and wiped the perspiration from my brow. This is kind of gruesome, I said. The doctor said, at this point in pregnancy, the products of conception aren't much. I stepped forward and peered into the pail. This time, I broke out in a cold sweat. I backed up and leaned against the lawn, my eyes closed. Dear Jesus, I thought, I just saw someone murdered, and I just didn't watch. Don Haynes in training. Products of conception. Um, I don't want to seem to be ripping on Planned Parenthood, but they're the ones in the news. They have rooms called POC rooms, product of conception. They don't say the aborted baby rooms, products of conception. Again, a euphemism to make what you're doing seem like you're not doing it. Because when you confront people, um, do you guys know who William Wilberforce was? He was instrumental in England in ending slavery. And he forced the British people to see what slavery was. 
he had a medallion struck, and I should have uh, taken a picture of one. It showed a slave in bondage being beaten in chains. It said, am I not a man and a brother? And when you force people to see and acknowledge exactly what's happening, the moral conscience that's built into them will tell them it's wrong. You have to deceive people or be at least not entirely honest so that that doesn't happen. And that's what these videos have made more difficult to do. Human life begins at conception. And again, that's really not a controversial statement. Okay. How do we get where we're at? In 1973, there was a Supreme Court decision. Actually, two of them. The one was Roe v. Wade. Uh, I should know her name, but it won't come to me. Texas, I think. Uh, out of Texas. Which said that... Um, there was a right to abortion founded on the idea that there's a right to privacy in the Constitution. Um, starting, I think they said, in the third trimester, or up to the third trimester. There was a companion case that most people don't know about called Doe v. Bolton, which was decided at the same time. And it said that a woman could have an abortion for any reason, including the health of the mother, but they defined health so broadly that it really meant for any reason. Does anyone in here know how late you can have an abortion in the United States? Nobody? About five minutes before birth. If abortion is legal in the United States until birth, now it would not be easy to find a doctor to perform an abortion at, say, 32 weeks, but it's legal in the U.S. Most people have no idea. You tell them that. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Um, this was strange to me. When you look at the definition of murder now, it says, well, this is the murder of a child unless it's initiated by the mother. Now, is that not a tiny bit counterintuitive? The person who you would think would have the greatest responsibility to guard the life of the child is the only one that can legally initiate killing it. Um, consider this, just wrap your mind around this. If a woman is driving to a clinic to have an abortion and she gets in an accident on the way, a car accident, she's not injured, insurance will cover the car, but the child is killed, ask yourself this. Has the driver of the other car, in fact, done her a favor? Because now she doesn't have to pay to have an abortion. But flip it around a little bit. This woman isn't driving to have an abortion. She's just driving on the street. And the same circumstances. She's not hurt, but the baby's killed. That guy has committed a crime. But the first guy did the woman a favor. When you actually look at these, there are so many contradictions, it, it makes your head spin. Okay, if we agree that we can't abort a two-year-old, or even a three-day-old, then we have to say... What is the difference between a three-day-old and a six-month-in-the-womb-year-old or a three-month-old in the womb that makes the one killable and the other one not? There are normally four answers to this question. The first one is size. Well, the baby in the womb is tiny. You know, grapefruit size. I don't know how big a three-month-old baby is, but little. But then that assumes, come here, Anna, that assumes that humanness is a function of size. Are Anna and I both fully human? But I'm a lot bigger than she is. Am I not more human? No. Okay? We're both fully human. So size doesn't work. Level of development. Now, if we had some, say, six-year-olds in here, we would say, the six-year-old is less developed than, where's Rachel? Rachel. But Rachel's mom is fully mature, so she might be a little bit more developed than Rachel is yet. But would we say then that the six-year-old has less of a right to life, Rachel has a little more right to life, and Don has all the right to life? No, that's clearly absurd. We couldn't kill the six-year-old, we couldn't kill a two-year-old. There isn't a sliding scale of you're a human being or you're not. 
I'm sorry, you are a human being or you're not. So it seems counterintuitive to say that because you're more developed, we can't kill you. But if you're less mature, we can kill you. Because all of us here were once two-year-olds. Probably obnoxious two-year-olds in my case, but that's another story. Environment. Okay. This is another objection. The baby is in the uterus. But why does the child's location make it killable? Mark's over there and I'm over here, but do I have more right to live than he does because of his location? If I step across this line, do I lose my right to life? Seemingly, where you're located, even if you're in the uterus, there's no reason to think that you would lose your right to life. Degree of dependency. Interestingly, I was uh, having this discussion with a fellow on Facebook the other day, my buddy Chris John, the atheist, and we got to this point. He said, yes, uh, the baby is a human being, but the mother has a greater right to life. And of course, I said, why? And he said, well, there's a number of definitions, but I'll go with autonomy. To be autonomous means you're totally in control of yourself, which is basically a degree of dependency. And I said, well, then, Chris, John, complete this sentence for me. Uh, autonomy makes you have a greater right to life because dot, dot, dot. And I waited, and he didn't put anything. And so I jumped in again, and I said, could I deduce that would have less right to life? Because they're clearly not autonomous. He never responded. I texted him the other day or Facebook messaged him. I said, hey, what happened? He said, well, I got busy and I didn't want to get on that thread two days later. And I said, oh, come on, jump back in. I haven't heard any more If you can remember, sled, size, level of development, environment, and degree of dependency, you can be prepared for most of the pushback. And I'm going to encourage you to harass me. I want to hear all the objections that you know. I mean, I'll help you if you don't know all of them, but I will provide you with responses to the most commonly heard ones. <clears throat> but if you can remember SLED, there's one question, number one, and SLED, number two, focus on the humanity of the unborn. And remember that any definition <clears throat> that makes the unborn not human can normally be applied to other people. Autonomy, size, environment. If you take that definition and run with it, you'll find it applies way too broadly. People will say consciousness. That's another one. But consider, <clears throat> every night when you go to sleep, do you become killable? You're not conscious. But I can't kill you in your sleep without incurring some kind of a penalty, can I? Of course not. So just think about that when people give you responses. <clears throat> Probably the best pro-choice response is what's called the bodily rights argument or the bodily autonomy argument. And this simply says, hey, it's my body. I can do whatever I want with it. <clears throat> but I want to consider this for a bit. How many of you know what thalidomide is? Anybody here? If Hannah was here, she'd be. Oh, you know. Wasn't that the drug that they gave moms to? Yes, that's exactly what it was. In the 50s, and the gal that was in the U.S. who resisted that drug become prevalent just died recently. I saw a little note about her obituary and talked about her. She said, no, we want a little more testing, which is why it mainly happened in, in England. In England, in the Europe, uh, probably more broadly, but definitely in the UK, in the 50s, they found this really awesome drug called thalidomide. And it greatly reduced the nausea that women experienced during pregnancy. And they said, oh, this is so awesome. What they didn't realize, it also stops formation of what they call the long bones. This bone, calf, thigh, so you get this. I just left one in. <clears throat> so you get this, you get um, K, 
kids whose feet are right here, they don't have calves at all. Um, and this happened in England. I don't know what they had, 20 or 30,000 of these. Now, in the U.S., as I mentioned, this person who was working for the FDA at the time uh, said, you know, let's test that just a little bit more. So I don't think we had any issues with it in the U.S. And I think it was Hannah that told me that they use thalidomide today in acne medicine. And she said you have to be on, or was it you that, that educated me to that? Oh, you have it to be on two acne, forms? It's not, it's not that. It's a different medicine. It's called acne pain. Okay, but you have to be on two forms of birth control, I think you told me, mm -hmm. before they'll let you take it. So here's the question. <clears throat> Would it be more accept, morally acceptable for a woman to take thalidomide during pregnancy? I'm not asking whether it's legal because it's not legal. Would it be morally acceptable? You know the consequences, but you say, oh, I don't care if I get a kid with deformed arms. I am so sick. Would that be a morally acceptable choice? Consider if you say, if that, your conscience automatically says, oh, that's, that's terrible. Who would do that? Then how would you say we can't mutilate or cause the baby to be born, you know, without an arm bone, but we can kill it? Doesn't seem counterintuitive that the one would be acceptable and the other not? Kind of illogical. Who was at the fair this last week and saw a mom with a cigarette in one hand and beer in the other with a pregnant belly? You see any of that? Does it make you go, do you automatically cringe? Don't we all look at that and go, oh my gosh, why is she doing that? Because we think, why would you do that to risk harm to this kid? Does society have a right to say, no, you can't have thalidomide, you have to suffer with the nausea? Does that seem like that would be acceptable to prevent the death or the deformation, as it were, of the child? I mean, when you think about this, you think, well, yeah, we can... We probably, that does seem logical. Because it doesn't seem reasonable to say, oh, go ahead, have thalidomide. We don't care how the baby's born. <clears throat> the uh, pro-life people typically use a technique called trot out a toddler. Which means when you say, here's a reason why a woman should be able to have an abortion, substitute a two-year-old, a cute little two-year-old like this one. It's great if you have a two-year-old. <clears throat> If you drop the two-year-old in its place, you go, well, no, that's barbaric to, to do to a two-year-old. Then you're back to the same question. What's the morally significant difference between the two-year-old and the three-month-old in the womb, which will not allow you to do it to the two-year-old? You automatically know it's wrong to do the two-year-old, but you say it's okay to do to the three-month-old in the womb. You see what I mean? Somebody says, I need to be able to finish my education. So I have to kill the baby. Then you then think about this. <clears throat> if this person had the child and her sophomore year in college, she said, this sucks. I cannot deal with this anymore. I'm going to kill that kid. Is that obviously wrong? So you want to drive it back to the same question. What's the moral difference between the unborn child and the born child that makes the one killable and the other one not? Because if they're morally equal, then you can't kill the unborn one either. Because we know you can't kill the born child. So keep looking. What are the parallels between the two? What differences make it acceptable to kill the one and not the other? So whenever you're thinking about this, put a toddler in the place of the unborn and say, would this be acceptable? How about the popular ones, rape and incest, or unpopular as it may be? <clears throat> What's the theory on why there should be a rape exception? What do you think the idea is behind that? Yeah, far away. Somebody, David. They didn't have the choice. Mm, yeah, or maybe because it'll be so traumatic to the mother, you think, to have to bear this child that's, you know, the result of a rape? That's the idea behind it. So consider this scenario, okay? On that logic, could the mother have the child and then six months later say, I cannot deal with this great baby and strangle it? Is that obviously morally defective? 
So what's the difference? If the three-month-old in the womb is morally equivalent to the three-month-old out of the womb, why can you choke the one to death or actually disassemble the one is really what they do, tear it apart, but not choke the other one to death? It seems obvious that if they're morally equivalent, neither one can be killed. Okay, bad birth choice. Overpopulation. A little quick update for you here. And again, you don't want to rabbit trail these things because people will try and take you all over the map. And it's a mistake, and I get sucked into it sometimes too. But push people back where they go, but you should know the answers to these. Overpopulation. As a country becomes more and more secular, it's, it, it stops even replenishing its population. <clears throat> the Scandinavian countries have fallen steadily in population, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and I swear to you, they're now teaching high school girls how to get pregnant because they're so worried. Since the 70s, they have not been replenishing their population. Japan is on track to lose like 30% of their population by 2060, partly because they've aborted a ton of female babies. Um, so it's totally screwed up. They have hundreds of thousands of men who will never be married. So this idea that we're on this big population boom, in the United States we break even barely with immigration. Um, but there's not an overpopulation boom. What you're really saying when you talk about this issue of overpopulation is you're saying we want fewer brown people in the world. Because in third world countries where they're not white, their populations are rising. So it's really a hugely racist thing to bring up. It's a, just a terrible argument. It's not true. Poverty. Again, same case. Let's try out the toddler. If um, when Abner was a year old, Lori Jean and I both lost our jobs. So we knew Abner was going to be poor, which she actually was anyway, but not as poor as she, she could have been. Could I then say, I don't want Abner to have a rough life and be poor and strangle her? Good grief, no. So why can I? Why would I look ahead and say, well, this baby won't have money, so I'm just going to kill it now? Because that is what you're saying. Okay? Because you'll hear this one, poverty. I don't want the child to grow up in poverty. By that logic, we have to kill all four children. The mom won't be able to finish her education. Same thing. Drop a toddler in there. Sophomore year, sophomore year of college. Oh, she's just wore out. Strangles the kid. And this happens sometimes. I'm assuming you guys, I don't know if you notice this stuff popping up on the news, but every once in a while, um, there was an incident about a year ago. <clears throat> a gal had in her purse a dead baby. And she was shopping with a friend at the mall. They got stopped for some reason by a security guard. And of course, he wigged out when he looked in the purse. And she had birthed a child, probably there at the mall, let it die in the purse, and just left it like it was an accessory and went shopping with her friend. And this happens every once in a while. So people do make horribly bad decisions. She, I don't know, I can't even begin to envision the logic. But again,